how you have to develop that healthy relationship with yourself first before going to chase those external goals in life. There's not enough information about Discord said the internet is a really cold place to seek acceptance. It really is. Whether you're inner circle or not, if I feel like you cannot see me, you will not understand where I'm coming from. At any point, I do not engage in conversation. I used to think if I just talk differently, if I just communicated differently, if I use different words, but then I had to accept that like no matter what, people don't want to change beliefs because in order for them to see you, they would have to shatter their relationship with their beliefs. This is just the reality that when I lost weight, people treated me differently. The world sets a standard and convinces us that we're not good enough. This motivates us to want to change because we want the world to accept us, to approve of us. Mm -hmm. So we try to conform to the world's standard, thinking that it makes us better people and mm -hmm. that it helps us grow. Mm -hmm. But chasing a goal out of seeking the world's approval is an insecure goal. Insecure goals causes unhealthy pressure, which mm -hmm. can create toxic patterns. Mm -hmm. When we seek validation from others to feel worthy, we start to believe that our worthiness depends on their approval and acceptance. This fragile mentality mistakes happiness, love, and inner peace as things that can be given or taken away from mm, us at mm, any time. Mm, mm. Don't Amen. Limit Wait, trigger warning. This documentary touches upon the, the subject of mental health and body image. All right. Okay, let's let's try to let's try to say some nice things about yourself. <laughs> okay. Um Have you ever wanted something so badly because you felt like it would make your life so much better? I don't want to be that girl in college that none of the guys like. But now, when the guys at my school and they look at me, I don't really probably find me as attractive anymore. Which I don't really care. But again, it serves as an indicator that my appearance has changed. I didn't always look like this. Just a few months ago, things were so different. Back then, the boy I was in love with liked me back. People were nice to me, and life just felt exciting. But now, people treated me differently, and that hurt. Ow. I just need to get it to the point where people can still look at me and not vomit. I could no longer enjoy the simple things that I used to. With, you know, gaining weight, I have to always wear big sweaters, always black pants. <sighs> so many restrictions, you know? The thing that hurt the most Was that her in her fat stage? I'm so confused. For me was that the boy I was in love with stopped talking to me and suddenly we were strangers again. You would think that the answer to a problem like this would be to glow up. And that's what I thought too. I thought it would make me happy. And it did. But it also ruined my life. I started my glow up journey in January 2018 and decided to document it on YouTube. The first day is always the hardest. <laughs> About two more miles to walk. So I'm putting on this salicylic acid. Think about the guys in college. Like, do you want to be that girl that the guys don't want to talk to? Yes. I'm going to change you. I'm going to change you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ooh. The journey was taking longer than expected because I was struggling with weight loss. That's really unfortunate. Anyway, it's okay. Don't lose faith. You're going to get right back. Everyone's on a different journey, bro. I lost nine pounds in two weeks. My first week of college, that's like one of the video options. That's not good. Obviously, this is, I'm assuming, an eating disorder. Lose faith, you're going to get right back on track and you'll lose weight. You know, I'm consistent in a lot of things, but when it comes to weight loss, it is so hard. The more I struggled, the more I craved my dream self. I'm starting to picture this person I can look like, who I can be. And she looks amazing and seems amazing. And it's just like everything I want to do is being held back by one thing, and it's my weight. This is interesting already, bro. Interestingly filmed, too. I do like the vibe. My efforts to lose weight weren't exactly working. I was getting further away from my dream self, and that made me even more insecure. I just remembered part of me actually doesn't want to go to dance class. The teacher was really judgmental towards me and, like, neglected me in the class. I felt really uncomfortable with myself and started to develop unhealthy patterns. You know, like, what I... Yeah, it says she ha she says that she has a disordered eating, but not ED. But as someone who has an ED, ma'am, you have an ED. What's a disordered eating versus ED? I'm not in the ED bubble. So I'm a little like unaware of their terminology. What I did in the past is I would actually just cancel plans. 
hands and not even go hang out. Also, I would put her in a category of mostly in her body versus mostly in her brain. Lots of people don't know which one they are. I go between the both. I'm like very in my brain, but I'm also very in my body. And so some people are just in their body, just in their brain. I feel like she's much more in her body. Like I'm not very concerned with my vessel, but I'm very in my body. I mean, I've gone through my journey, right? I'm 35 now this month so or next month. So I'm like, I'm very like, aware of the journey of like, do I hate myself? Do I love myself? Should I, oh my God, I'm ugly. Oh, I want to hide. Oh my God. So I've already gone through it. But at this stage in my life, I'm very much like, this is my vessel. This is my ship. And I decide how I keep it. And it is a struggle sometimes, but also the struggle is from my internal complex. It's not from anything else. So I prioritize a lot less importance on this thing that I call a body, you know? Uh, disordered eating is used if the person doesn't have a diagnosis. Tefka says, I didn't consider her fat at any point in this video. Now, to be fair, I'm Middle Eastern fat. Everyone has a different culture. Now I think like this isn't good. I don't think I'm actually fat, but I think that in certain cultures, they call you fat when you're not in shape or not like in, like have less body fat. So I would, I would assume she's in a similar culture as an Asian. I'm assuming she's dealing with Asian fat, which is very much Middle Eastern fat. I mean, we're all Asian in the end. So like, you know what I mean? Now with people. I don't take Instagram photos if I've gained weight, you know? Because it's like, I don't even want to go out to this party anymore because I just look terrible. And yeah, like I don't look good. She's so cute. Clothes. When I was walking to my hair salon in my head. She's so adorable. So it sucks when you don't, it doesn't match, you know? I just wanted to go around and buy a bunch of different food. Why am I thinking this way? Why am I thinking this way? Like, why do I want to go and buy a bunch of food when I'm like not even that hungry? Why would I want to sabotage everything? Like, but if I stay strong today, tomorrow should be easier. I don't know what to do. I, I just can't meet up with him looking like this. Like, this is just not acceptable. Mm. That's a lot of pressure, girl. I don't see her progress anymore. She just keeps repeating the same things. Does it really take that long for somebody to glow up? You're just dragging this on purpose. Girl, block these people, girl. People were getting tired of watching my repetitive failures. I stopped posting on YouTube and decided I would come back to complete my story once I figured everything out and finally glowed up. Mm. I moved back to Los Angeles after finishing my studies and my struggle continued off. And then today I was in the room and it was just laughing at me. <laughs> and they're like, what? Because you ate too much? Like, <laughs> I just, <laughs> I just, <laughs> And I don't know why I'm crying about it, but it's probably because I've struggled with it for so long. Mm, mm -hmm. That's Asian fat, all right. No offense. I got it. Me too. Yep, that's Asian fat, all right. Also, her pants look too small for her. But yeah. I get it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I get the struggle, girl. I get it. I get it. During this time, I got help from a therapist and a celebrity fitness trainer, but none of that worked. Mm. It only gave me more philosophy, bro. Reasons to be ashamed of myself. Mm. You know, you may wonder, like, how could you let yourself get to this point? And girl habibi girl because i didn't care i guess because i understand it's like a deeper rooted issue it's like who i am on the inside mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and who i am on the inside is pretty weak oh it was hard not to dislike my hey that's pretty fucking introspective of her that's pretty fucking good myself i was a failure Sometimes the world insults you in a way that makes you feel like you just can't take it anymore. I did not come this far just to come this far. Oh. The humiliation pushed me to such a low point that I thought I'd rather die than be a failure. Mm. When your feelings get hurt this much, you can't help but become consumed by darkness. I wanted to just Oh my god, I'm gonna get copyrighted for this song, like the stream, guys. Destroy my old self and bury her so deep into the ground that she never comes back to make me feel ashamed or humiliated ever again. I was extremely angry and fed up with being this version of myself. So I started- Is that David Goggins, bro? And then the white boy band of all white boys, bro? She's so white, bro. I mean that in the nicest way. USC? 
I get it, girl. I know what kind of, I know where you live, girl. Pushing past my limits because I wanted to get to my dream self as fast as possible. I needed to succeed because succeeding meant that all my problems would go away and I would finally be happy. And I would finally be happy. Yeah, okay, I'd call that fat. But like chubby fat versus fat fat. Because like that's like, uh, what is that, like 15, 20 pounds overweight? She looks good. She looks good thin. Um, They're both different vibes for sure. Okay, yeah, I'd call that definitely like, uh, yeah. I mean, in my language, I'd call that fat for sure. I like looking at someone different. Who are you? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, okay, good for you. She looks good. Not too skinny. Looks about right. Looks good. One month later. I went back on YouTube to complete my story and I... She has 2 million subscribers? Who the fuck is she? Who the fuck is she? Am I crazy? I thought she was like a no-name channel. I've never heard of this fucking girl. Two million subscribers? Am I fucking crazy? Is that her? I'm just so... What? I didn't expect that many people to watch it. And when you've gone so long not feeling good about yourself, the effects of success truly make you feel valued and appreciated. You get hooked on the high of the wins and validation. And you almost feel like you can't live without it. Like, Whoa. if I failed now, there was really no point in living anymore. Oh my gosh, people are going to see this and they're probably going to expect me to be perfect afterwards. I was like, wow, if I do something in the future and I do something wrong, people are just going to think, oh, she's just like her old self. When the external validation feels too good, there's usually another side to it. I was live streaming and then someone commented and then people were like asking, they were like, why do you not look as good as your Instagram photo? And I'm like, because my lifestyle is out of whack and yes, I have gained a little bit of weight back. You start to feel like the world is watching your every move, like you cannot be less than this standard. I became really self-conscious and even a little bit of weight gain made me feel insecure. Basically, I walked in, I, I was like holding myself. I felt uncomfortable in my own skin. I really understood mm. what that meant. And um, not only did I feel uncomfortable, I just felt like I didn't belong. I felt like... It was easy to be kind to myself when I was my ideal standard, but as soon as I wasn't, it would trigger these negative thoughts and I would start to shame myself. Mm. As I was eating my cake, I saw this woman running and I literally saw her and- I would love some cake right now. I felt bad about myself. And so that's when you realize it's not about the other person. It doesn't affect your life. What affects your life is if you're running or not. I know why I felt so bad about myself. It was because number one, I was in my pajamas. Number two, I haven't been eating healthy this week. I thought I was just keeping myself in check because when you are being the best version of yourself, you just don't let yourself do these unhealthy habits. My dirty apartment is triggering me. My disgusting outfit is triggering me. The fact that I haven't showered in a while is triggering me. <laughs> like... I couldn't maintain a balance in my life, and as a result, I couldn't hold on to my dream body. Holy f I Sorry, Chrissy says I dislike that her audience is just as judgy as she is on herself. Like, I get it's the internet, but boo. Well, I think that's the fear. Like, uh, I think that's why I focus on body positivity or sex positivity or just, like, image bo body positivity. Because ultimately, like, it's why I didn't like Think Before You Sleep's whole thing about Alyssa. Because, again, shaming doesn't work, first of all. Okay? It's just a cycle and a loop of, like, mental issues. But more than that, it's just like there's no need to moralize it. Like there's just no need to moralize it. And I think the moralization is what brings on a lot of the issues. Um, so, you know, because I'm always up and down too. Like I always, I'm kind of worried that I'm sending the message because I talk about working out or calories. I'm worried that people are going to have an expectation of me that I didn't mean to. I don't know how to say this. It's none of your business how my body is. Like with peace and love, it's none of my audience's business, my relationship with my fucking body or like what the journey is or if I gain weight or not. Like I will block bitches. But also I will block bitches because I'm so sorry that I gave you the impression that you could have an opinion on what my body looks like. Like I'm – that's my bad. But also like I will bite you. 
Okay. And I think that that's part of the dilemma of like, or that's part of the lesson of getting older. I remember when I started to gain weight in my 20s, people would come on my live streams and say, oh, you're fat now. Like, I don't like you. I don't want to watch you if you get fat. And I'd be like, oh my God, really block. And I would block them. And I'm like, no, you don't get to decide if I'm fat or skinny. You don't get to decide if I'm muscular or not. You don't get to decide the journey. Like ultimately, it's me, myself, and I, and I swear to God, I will old yeller myself if you try to pressure me about my body. Okay. And I think that that's the thing is like the irony is if you put pressure on me, I will do the opposite. So if you want to reverse psychology, Brittany, you tell me I'm doing a great job. Okay. You tell me I love everything you put out and I have no reason to not like it, you know, and then you would suggest something and I might do it. I feel like I do this with my OF where people, if they are in any way demanding, I'm like, oh, I will quit. I'll delete the whole page. I'll do it. But if you're positive, I might even make a video that you suggested. But if you tell me what to do, I'll delete my whole life right now. Okay? So you will take what you get. Period. I look different. I wasn't supposed to end up like this again. I was not supposed to end up like this again. Get what the f happened to the pain of who I used to be. And I look fat too. So throw me out on the streets at this point. I don't deserve this. While my life was spiraling out of control, the online pressure was getting worse. Coach Greg, and today I'm going to be talking about <gasps> Olivia. Dun Coach Greg, my dad and I watch him. Andrea, she recently posted a video that essentially has gone viral. Oh, we'll, we'll be like oh, people be making videos about her. That's a lot. Yeah, Olivia D'Andrea's blow up diary. I've never gotten so many reaction requests. Oh my god! Like that video. So I am. Other creators were commenting on my journey, oh. and it led to me receiving a lot of messages. Ooh, see, the working out bubble is toxic as fuck. A lot of these people are lying. A lot of them are on drugs. And a lot of them are taking photos that they post year around when they're absolutely not cut year around. So y'all better just like keep that in mind. I'm just trying to be the best version for me and I'm trying to <gasps> make May 14th, that's my birthday. Not to make this about me, but she is having a breakdown on my birthday. I get it, girl. Feel better as I share my journey. It's like, it's like people, I can feel negative comments so happy with the fact that I didn't reach this perfect version. Okay, let's let's try to let's try to say some nice things about yourself. Okay, um. Uh, And that is how glowing up ruined my life. Damn. Mm. Oh, delete, block, block. You have so much power in your life, block. There are 8 billion people on the planet. Find the audience that isn't psychopaths. Who writes this? I've never... Stop it. Like, we might make content, but content is not the same on going, as going on someone's page. Genuinely, don't watch videos about yourself. I will say, though, shout out to everyone who slides into my DMs after I make videos about you. Because I do forget that you might watch it. But also, I figure you wouldn't. Because I almost never watch videos people make about me. Because, um, they're boring. But also, <laughs> I just assume they're making content. Like, I kind of just see it as, like, work. So when people make videos about me, I'm like, oh, okay. They're just, like, working. But I never think it's about me. So like, I don't think to watch them, which is probably why. But that's probably something I've learned, to be fair. I think I've learned not to watch everything. You know what I mean? Like Joe Rogan says, don't read the comments. Now, with that said, I will fucking block you off my channel if you, in bad faith, write shit on my channel. This is bad faith. Okay? Block it. I guess she didn't glow up. At block it. They're psychopaths. Who writes this on people's YouTube channels? Psychopaths. Block it. I couldn't feel anything and I was losing my will to live. Depression's real, bro. <laughs> what 
what is she doing in this time? Is she a student now? So... I'm struggling to care about anything in my life. And then I realized I thought about my subscribers and something, like I felt something. And so I was like, what about my subscribers? I care about them. And all I want is for people to accept me in any body that I am in. And the, the cold hard truth is, I don't know why. I don't know why I want to be accepted. Hmm. Interesting. What is the purpose? What is the purpose of this entire glow up journey? What is the purpose for why you're trying to reach that goal in your life? When I was younger, I said that I just wanted to be happy. And no one ever questioned me. I didn't even question me because it was such a socially acceptable goal to go glow up, to chase something that the world values. But now with the awareness that I have, I recognize that that happiness I was after was not a good happiness. The problem with the glow up concept is that we're only seeing these results, which can easily create the illusion that these results is what creates the happiness. And secondly, it can be easy to fall into the mindset that the before version of you is not enough or acceptable. And it starts to make you place value on only one version of yourself, the version that has all the external things that society values. It ends up creating such a fake relationship with yourself. It's like a fake friend, a friend that only likes you because you're pretty, you have cool clothes, you're rich, you get good grades. That's not a friend that I want. Mm -hmm. I want a friend that likes me no matter what. Correction, I want a friend that loves me no matter what. There's a difference between like and love. I think- Oh, based girl. Yes, ma'am, there is a difference. It's fine, sometimes we don't like ourselves, but our love for ourselves should be such a basic human need that you should have at all times and it should not be dependent on a goal. Watch the story later because I'm gonna talk about the difference between like self-worth and self-confidence and all that. Okay, bye. Those real friends are the ones that make you feel deep fulfillment. The fake friends make you feel empty in the end. I think there's so much knowledge online about how to chase external goals in life, mm -hmm. but not enough about how you have to develop that healthy relationship with yourself first before going to chase those external goals in life. There's not enough information about- Discord said the internet is a really cold place to seek acceptance. It really is. The internet is probably- it's an ideal, like in your mind, you would think the internet's a great place to find acceptance and it can be in small bursts, but it never really is in large ones. And even in the small bursts, you have to be very careful, set very strong boundaries because like the internet will try to shame you. You know how people try to like um, reverse psychology past your boundaries? <gasps> If you were really strong, you'd like answer my critique. If you were really like convinced in your values, you'd answer my critique. I agree with you, generally speaking, but not when you are so bad faith that if I talk to you, you'll never believe me, right? I don't have conversations with people about the intimacies of my brain that are not willing to hear me or see me. That's a big rule, whether they're inner circle or not. Whoop, my chair moved. Whether you're inner circle or not, if I feel like you cannot see me, you will not understand where I'm coming from. At any point, I do not engage in conversation. I used to think if I just talk differently, if I just communicated differently, if I use different words, but then I had to accept that like no matter what, people don't want to change beliefs because in order for them to see you, they would have to shatter their relationship with their beliefs, right? And I know I, I always use the gay example because I know for some people, coming out to their parents changed their parents' relationship with their faith. That's not my mommy and daddy, girl. I don't have a mommy and daddy. They're going to ditch Jesus for their gay daughter. That's not going to happen. Okay. So I really appreciate that energy that other people get that from their parents. But like, ma'am, ma'am. Okay. That's not my bubble. So again, same thing with everything else. I think my parents gave me the greatest gift, which is like fierce independence, but also unconditional love. I know my parents unconditionally like love me, even when we don't always like each other. I unconditionally love my inner circle. I don't always like everybody and I don't always get along with everybody. But ultimately, I know we love each other. And I know if it was really important, we'd be there for one another. I also know we're good at giving each other space. I also know, I also know, I also know, right? Because I know myself and I know how to have a relationship with other people because I have such a good relationship with myself. I hope at the end of this video, she has one with herself. She seems a lot better about how to make yourself your own best friend. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the video and see how I end up becoming my own best friend. Oh, okay, I'm excited. What is acceptance? Acceptance is an opening of your heart to the realities of life. <laughs> ¶¶ 
The thought of acceptance is painful and scary because it makes us feel like we have to let go of our goals and dreams, stop growing, and accept our harsh realities. This is just the reality that when I lost weight, people treated me differently. The world sets a standard and convinces us that we're not good enough. This mm. motivates us to want to change because we want the world to accept us, to approve of us. Mm -hmm. So we try to conform to the world's standard, thinking that it makes us better people and mm. that it helps us grow. Mm -hmm. But chasing a goal out of seeking the world's approval is an insecure goal. Insecure goals causes unhealthy pressure, which mm. can create toxic patterns. Mm -hmm. When we seek validation from others to feel worthy, we start to believe that our worthiness depends on their approval and acceptance. This fragile mentality mistakes happiness, love, and inner peace as things that can be given or taken away from mm, us at any mm, time. Mm, Don't amen. limit yourself to what society says is successful. Be yourself as cheesy as that. Ooh, that was fire, right? Let's listen up. Believe that our worthiness depends on their approval and acceptance. This fragile mentality mistakes happiness, love, and inner peace as things that can be given or taken away from us at any time. Ooh. Ooh, that's fire, bro. I don't know what the fuck she's reading Tao Te Ching or what the fuck she's reading not, but whoo, that's it right there. That's from me, baby. That's a relationship with myself. No one can take your peace, which is scary because it means when it's disrupted, something happened and it happened within you. And that's okay too, right? Sometimes your peace will be disrupted, right? But get get it back on track. If that happens, right? But it's really you, girl. Ooh, it's a relationship with you, girl. Don't limit yourself to what society says is successful. <gasps> Be yourself as cheesy as that sounds. Anyway, I started to ask myself, what well, was like the purpose of all of this, right? The main intent of that journey was for me to glow up and be happy. Yes, uh, she, had a men uh, she had a mentality grow glow up, that's for sure. Yes, ma'am. Happy. And here I am at the end of my journey. Mm. And I'm really really unhappy mm. <laughs> probably more unhappy than i've ever been mm -hmm. a true everlasting transformation requires you to break down the very structure of your belief system and rebuild it in a new and improved form oh girl pop that bubble and make your own girl pop that bubble and make your own girl mm. and the very first step to everlasting improvement is making peace with all versions of yourself Ooh. forgiving yourself and realizing that you were worthy all along mm. regardless of your standards i think i just yo didn't i say that bro no one's gonna make me fat feel bad for being fat Fat Brittany was doing her best, bro. She, this is good, bro. Kaylin says, plot twist, she's been watching you. Plot twist, she's been reading some books, bro. She fire, bro. I want to forgive myself mm. <laughs> for everything that's happened. <laughs> it's like a forgiveness, like, hey, dude. It's okay. Mm. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I think there's just this part of me that wants to say, hey. Mm. I don't know if you can see me, but I just want to say this one thing. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you have achieved, what you look like. No matter the mistakes we've made, no matter whether or not we can reach a goal, I just hope that you feel like you are enough for once. Because I know what it feels like to not. Self-worth is oftentimes confused with self-confidence. Mm. Self-confidence is a feeling of trust in one's abilities. It is derived from our accomplishments and skills. Our confidence goes up and down depending on how we're doing in various aspects of our lives. Self-worth is a feeling of love for yourself. It is the knowledge that we are inherently worthy of love and care no matter the externals. Your self-love should not waver. This Yo! This is so good, bro. This is... This is a good fucking tool right here, baby. It allows us to look at self-acceptance in a deeper way. Self-acceptance is not about complacency, but about acknowledging your current reality and not judging it. When we Ooh. judge ourselves so harshly, it affects our self-worth. When our self-worth lowers, it can cause us to go seek that love on the outside through external goals or other people because we are not getting that love from the inside. How I broke the habit of negatively judging myself is by saying the words, it's okay. It's okay that you're not perfect. It's okay that you were self-critical. It's okay that you weren't productive. The negative judgmental voice in our heads is learned. It is learned through all the voices you have internalized from people, parents, friends, society, anyone who wants you to conform to their ideas of what you should be like and what you should- 
It's the bubbles. The bubbles are coming to swallow you. Mm. Should do. Self-acceptance is a way of deprogramming from societal standards. By acknowledging our situation in a neutral way, we can remove the negative judgment that pressures us to change. When we release negative judgment, we create space for self-awareness and compassion. We start to listen to ourselves more, become more in tune with our thoughts and feelings, and are able to stand up for ourselves and choose what we really want to do. Whether that is to change yourself or not change yourself, your happiness does not have to make sense to other people. Mm. Well, when you go. accept yourself, some amazing things start to happen. You believe in your own value and only surround yourself with people who see it too. I'm at the mall and something just happened to me. So there was a guy that I went on a date with two years ago during my glow up journey. And at the time, I didn't really understand how much I was lacking in self-acceptance and self-love and all that. So I like so badly wanted him. Like I was low-key desperate. I literally just saw him. <laughs> he was on a date with another girl, but it's so crazy because of how much I've changed as a person. It's so crazy because like I looked, I saw him and there was just no desire for him mm. because I feel so whole and full on the inside. I love myself truly deep down so much now that I don't want a guy that doesn't want me. Literally, I couldn't get over that obsession. I didn't know why. I couldn't understand why I obsessed over him. And now I mm. see it's because I so badly wanted validation in the past. Mm. And I didn't even understand that. I was like, nah, I'm not the girl who wants that stuff. But I didn't really subconsciously I did. And now I literally just saw him with another girl and I'm like, good for you. And I'm just like, I'm gonna go shopping now. You will nice. naturally start to defend yourself from negativity and unhealthy pressure. I'm at the mall right now with my mom, and my mom loves me, whatever, um, not at all out of hate. Like, she just wants the best for me. And my mom was just talking to my aunt, saying the same comment that she said to me for so many years, which is like, oh, just wait and see. And once Olivia loses just a little bit of weight, she's gonna look gorgeous. And in the past, I always loved to hear that comment. That was like my favorite, because it just put such a high self-worth on my thinner self and basically completely disregarding who I am right now. And so now when I hear that comment, I immediately just like threw it out of my head. I was like, nope, can't tell you how much more normal my thoughts are now, now that I've truly like learned to love and accept who I am right now. You stop restricting yourself from the simple joys of life because you realize you deserve to be happy. In the past, every time I came to the mall, I would say, I don't want to try on clothes. I don't want to buy any clothes because I don't want to waste money on my current self. Like only my skinny self deserves to have pretty clothes. So, and, and didn't realize at the time how toxic that was, how that sends a message to your subconscious self that, hey, I don't accept you right now. So you don't even deserve nice clothes. Do you see what I'm saying? Now it's like, if I want to make myself look nice now, please do. You stop depending on other people's validation to feel good about yourself. Now I see that I really so badly wanted people to treat me better because I wasn't treating myself well. Mm. Once I started treating myself well, like I am right now, if someone's gonna treat me badly because like, okay, I'm not as thin or whatever, dude, if you don't wanna treat me as nicely because of the way I look, then I wouldn't even want someone in my life like that. If you don't use it. That right there. I don't want people in my life like who do certain things. There are just certain things. Like I'm all, people are messy. People are on their own journey. But there's a specific kind of cruelty that people exhibit. And again, inner circle is a little different because like unconditional love, people go through whatever. But like in general, I try not to have friends that are deeply cruel, if any cruelty, obviously. But there is some like deep cruel you know, in ways that are specific. Of course, language is a barrier, right? How we imagine or have conversations is specific. And I assume people have good intentions, right? So this is like, this is kind of like a beautiful realization of like, okay, no, I don't want that, you know? And you don't have to justify it. Just know that it's fucking with your inner peace, bro. If it fucks with your inner peace, get rid of it. Don't lie to yourself though. Make sure it's fucking with your inner peace and it's not actually trying to hold you accountable, right? Which is different. You lose it. Self-acceptance is a daily practice. Ultimately, you end up with the tools for maintaining your self-worth, and that's when you know you've glowed up and are ready to go on that external transformation if you want to. Mm. Interesting. 
Hi. Hi. Today is January 31st, 2024. The good thing is that when you have a really good relationship with yourself, it can cause you to flourish in relationships. So I'm very excited to announce that my next series will be coming out and it's called The Dating Diaries. I documented the last year of my dating journey. It was a huge roller coaster. I'm getting so excited just thinking about it. But anyway, yeah, so there's lots to come on my YouTube Interesting. channel. Interesting. I'm just so excited to be back and being a YouTuber. Oh my gosh. Okay, bye. Interesting. 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 Okay. Good video. We love when people fucking find themselves, bro. What a vibe. Good vibe. Loved it. I actually wouldn't mind watching her dating series too. So maybe we'll do that. Um, but yeah, good vibes. I really am happy for people's happy. It's nice to see people happy. And I really hope she continues to find that journey with herself, right? That joyous journey, like finding her joy, whatever that means. What a vibe, bro. Whoever sent that to the Discord, thank you so much. I really try to watch the videos on the Discord suggested tab um, if I think they'll be good for stream, you know? And this was a good decision. <sighs> hmm. Yeah. Remember how I said I couldn't work on my body until I worked on my mental health? And then as I worked on my body, my spiritual health flourished. Here, I'm going to link her video in the chat, guys. You guys are asking for it. I'll link it too in the Discord so you guys can see it there. Good energy. Her name's, uh, is it Olivia? But with an A, Olivia. I'll subscribe, like the video. Um, Let's check out the comments, bros. The moment you said, okay, try to say something nice to yourself with you, uh, with you suddenly being silent was so heartbreaking. It makes me cry. I just really wanted people to treat me better because I wasn't treating myself well. Gosh dang, that makes so much sense. Same thing with cruelty. I think like we're exceptionally cruel to people when we feel cruel to ourselves. Now, of course, and this is very key because I don't think people understand this, right? Being misunderstood is not the same thing because I think sometimes we think misunderstanding is like an ex like I don't want to misunderstand people like when we reviewed think before you sleep he obviously wasn't trying to be cruel to Alyssa by body shaming her but he wasn't helping either the road to hell is paved in your good intentions like her mother like Olivia's mother who was like she'll be so much like she'll be her true self or prettiest self when she's thin whatever she said it's like I know you have good intentions but they're not fucking helping right now so like the road to hell is paved in your good intentions. Make sure when you're trying to help somebody and maybe you just shouldn't. I know the world says we should help people, but sometimes I think the reason the world is so shitty is because you all are trying to help too much. Mind your business, okay? But also if people want you, they'll seek you out, which I think is important as well. But being misunderstood is not the same thing as making a mistake and is not the same thing as like authentic help. People can, from their perspective, authentically want to help you. And from your perspective, be making it worse, okay? So I'm really glad that she, um, I'm really glad that she realized like her mom had good intentions, but they weren't about her. They were about her mom's insecurities. I had a cousin the other day, I told you guys, who was like, Brittany, she's mad at me for saying she'll look cute when she's thin. And I'm like, um, I'm going to be real with you, girl. She's going to the gym a lot and she's just like, she's doing pretty good. You know, like I, I feel like talking about her weight is probably not going to help, you know, but Middle Eastern people very good at giving you eating disorders or body issues and Asians, they're, you know, they're up there too. So it is what it is, right? Like our bubbles are trying to help us um, because they want to be good people, but who girl, the road to hell is paved in good intentions, you know? And so there's like a misunderstanding. I'm just trying to help you. I'm just trying to help you. I know. I know you're trying to help. If I need your help, I'll seek it out. If I need your help, I'll seek it out. I think that's what I love about being a YouTuber. If you need me, I'm here. And if you don't, unsubscribe. I'm here if you need me. But if you don't, unsubscribe. Stop watching. Okay? Stop watching. Right? It's kind of funny how much people try to help. Okay, social media has really destroyed a whole generation. It makes me incredibly sad. Oh, yeah. Okay, because our ancestors had it so much better. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you for making this. It feels like a great comfort. I'm in recovery right now after from almost losing my life to depression about a year and a half ago. This video so wonderfully and vividly illustrates the like extrusionary, the excruciating process of breaking down, losing yourself and your brain, finding the space it needs to heal. Bro, let me tell you, you know, watching her cry was interesting because I haven't had a real cry in um, 
a while. I obviously haven't needed to. I've cried for reasonable things, like being sad in general or crying from fibro or something. But like that breaking down feeling, I haven't had like four years, right? Because I've been in my joy and I've been chilling. But it feels really good and I think it's really necessary. I cry from stress sometimes. Stress is so, oh my God, when I'm stressed, I cry. It feels great. I love a stressful cry. Oh, it feels like a huge relief. Like I'm, oh, like in yoga, we do yoga once a month on the Discord. It's professionally taught. We have it on the 28th this month. And she does this thing where she'll be like, sigh it out of your mouth. And I just do that. And it feels so good. But it's about doing the thing you need to maintain your joy and your sanity, your peace. That's why I, I'm so shocked. And again, no judgment. But the the reason I don't live at home and I and I love my family is because I cannot maintain my peace and live with my parents. I love them so much. I cannot do it. I just cannot maintain my peace and live with my parents. It's just too much. Like it's too many things coming at me at once. Um, too many negative not just being there, but like you don't have the same because you have to respect the relationship they have with their house and their God. I will say the hardest, I know I'm skipping my thought process here, but the hardest part about existing is other people. I really believe that. I really believe the hardest part about existing is other people. And I say that with the greatest amount of respect and joy. And I think that's why I practice letting go of that attachment of people because they really are the most difficult part about being alive. Everything else is easy. People are incredibly difficult because they mean so well and they will hurt you in the process of trying to love you. And I don't know how to explain to people like you need to back off. But people really with their good intentions will tell you to unalive yourself. It's a very interesting thing. With their good intentions, they will take away your civil rights. With their good intention, they will get you fired. With their good intentions, with their good intentions, with their good intentions. And I don't need any more of your good intentions. I need you to mind your business. Okay? But it is the most difficult part. Kay says it's the most difficult and the best parts. For me, it's not the best parts. I'll be real with you. I don't think other people are the best parts. But I think uh, my husband is one of the best parts. I think my husband is definitely one of the best parts, right? Absolutely. You know, he is one of my favorite parts. My cat is one of my favorite parts. But I'm not sure people, people are my favorite part. I'm not convinced. Maybe person, you know? <laughs> and my head in real life while I'm dead. My belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool